Today in Apple Motion, I'm going to show you how to build a line graph that is massively inspired by the YouTube channel Vox. Also, if you're a patron, you can download this project file and use it in your videos right now. Go ahead and open up Apple Motion. From there, select a motion project. Then over in your presets, make sure you set the duration to something like 10 seconds or longer. After that, we can go ahead and push open. The first thing I want to do is get a rough backdrop. So let's go on over into our generators on the left side and find the gradient. I'll click and drag that into the group that's already here in the layer stack. Then clicking on this down arrow next to our arrow tool, we'll get the adjust item and we can adjust this gradient so it looks a little bit more elegant. Before we jump into the next step, let's go ahead and also add in our grid. To do that, we'll just locate the grid over here in our generators and drag that into the same group. I'm also going to want to throw this grid into its own group, all contained within this original group. So right click on the grid and then select group. We can go ahead and rename this group to be grid and text. And then from there, we can go on over into our inspector and first select our basic grid. From here, we can go on over to the left side and we can start to adjust the different settings to get this grid looking how we want it. So I'll go ahead and drag up the BG width to be something like 125 and the BG height to be something like 125. Then from there, we'll want to go up to the width and height and adjust this so that this grid fits on our screen in a way that we're really happy with. I happen to like how it looks by leaving a little bit of the edges shooting off to the side, but you can go ahead and cap it off by enabling this auto fit box if you so desire. Now you'll notice that we have this big black background. Let's go ahead and fix that. Going to the BG opacity slider, we can just drag that down to zero and now we just have our grid. Now that we have our grid in place, let's go ahead and add in some values here on the top and left side. So we'll go to our text selection and we can type in subscribers and this will essentially be a graph of subscribers over the last few months. From there, we can go ahead and set the alignment to the center and get our arrow tool and just drag this so it's perfectly centered up on our screen. After that, we can go ahead and get our text tool once more and we can create our first value, which we'll go ahead and just set as 10K. I'm also gonna set the alignment over to this center alignment. I just find it's a little bit easier to work with and get our arrow tool. We'll go ahead and roughly drag this into position and we can even push the command tool if we don't like how it's snapping our alignment. We'll go ahead and get it centered up with this original line here. Then I'm gonna push command D and drag the second one straight up to the second value and command D just until we have all of these lines marked out with a number. If they aren't perfectly lined up, that is not a problem. All we need to do is select all of these, then we'll go up to Object, Alignment, and we can select Distribute Top. So now all of these should be perfectly aligned with our lines here on our grid. After that, we can go into each of these values and adjust what they say. So we'll make this next one 20K, and the next one after that 30K so on and so forth until you have a completed grid here on the left side. Now down here at the bottom, let's go ahead and add in some months. To do that, we can go ahead and get our text tool once again, and I'll just type in the first month that we want to start with, and then we can set the alignment to be centered. I'll go ahead and drag this roughly into position, and once again, we'll just command D to duplicate it until we have all of these lines filled in, and again, they don't need to be perfectly centered or lined up, we can go ahead and adjust that at the end. Now that I have all of these text lines in place, we can go ahead and select them all, go to object, alignment, and then we can just select something like distribute right. From there, we can go ahead and adjust each of these to say the proper month. And now I have all of the values that I would like for this grid. Finally, we can go ahead and draw in the graph on this grid. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my Bezier tool and we'll just start drawing on this grid as we want the graph to appear. Now, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and import an image of a graph that that lines up with these different values. That way you can trace it with this Bezier tool. That'll make it so your lines are really accurate along this grid. I don't have an image that shows that, so I'm gonna go ahead and just freehand this, but you can go ahead and set that up if you so desire. Now that I have all of my lines drawn, I'm just gonna go ahead and push enter, which will create a shape. But you'll notice that we have these weird white lines in the center. So we'll go on over to the left-hand side and disable the fill, which should fix that. And we'll also locate this width slider. Drag that width way down. And if you wanted to, you could even change the brush color. Now that we have that Bezier line in place, let's go ahead and animate it drawing on. So we'll go up to behaviors. We'll go down to shape and then select right on. That's gonna add this purple parameter behavior on my timeline. If you don't see that purple parameter behavior, make sure that is enabled by clicking on this gear icon. We'll slide forward about two seconds and then I'll push O, which will trim it down to that two second value. So if we push play, we now have this nice little animation playing out. 
And that's looking pretty good. But something that I absolutely love with Vox animations is everything looks very hand drawn, almost like it's stop motion. So the next few things are the secret sauce to get this graph looking like that. First, let's go ahead and select the grid and text group. From there, we'll go up to filters, we'll go down to stylize, and then select crystallize. You'll see that that is giving me some jagged edges. We'll go ahead and set the size all the way down to three, which is the lowest value we can do and we'll drag the speed all the way up to two. Now that we have that in place, go ahead and select this main group. I'm gonna collapse the secondary group. We'll go up to filters, we'll go down to time, and then select strobe. With that strobe parameter added, go on over to the left side and you'll locate the strobe value. Let's set this down to something like eight frames per second. I happen to really like how this looks. And if I push play, we now have this beautiful looking hand-drawn animation that's applied on top of everything. It really nicely roughens up the edges and it even makes it so our line drawing in looks very stop motion-esque. Finally, we could select this grid, go over to our properties and find the drop shadow value. We'll go ahead and enable that and press show and we could drag out the distance a little bit on that drop shadow if we wanted to. You could make the shadow more intense by bringing up the opacity or drag it back. I'm gonna drag it back and drag up the blur a little bit. And we could also change how this gradient looks. So I'll go ahead and select the gradient. We'll go to our generators and I'm just gonna select one of these that have been preset. I happen to like how industrial sky looks or we could even do something like the icy blue. Once you're ready to send this over to Final Cut Pro, all you need to do is go up to the top right hand corner, press share and export movie. Then you can export this for your video project and import it as an original video to Final Cut Pro. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and you may wanna check out this video where I show you how to recreate three amazing looking Vox animations using Apple Motion. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.